And welcome to Washington Unplugged, Governors in the News. I'm Bob Schieffer, and this is day one of the Republican Governors Association annual meeting. We're going to talk this morning with the association's chairman, Mississippi Governor Haley Barber, and also hear from the Democratic Governors Association director, Nathan Daschle. But first, from Austin, uh, Governor Haley Barber. Governor, what's on the uh, what's on the governor's minds as they convene here in today? Well, of course, Bob. But the big thing on our minds was the success that we had earlier this month in the, the two governor's elections in New Jersey and Virginia, which we swept. Uh, both states that were won by President Obama, and we won Virginia by 18 points and defeated incumbent Democrat Governor John Corzine in, in uh, New Jersey by five points. We feel like uh, these are not only important victories in and of themselves, but really give us momentum and a springboard into the, to the critical 2010 elections when they're 37 governor's races, uh, I think 36 senators and the entire House of Representatives are up. Well, you know, of course, a lot of Democrats will, will take just uh, the opposite line on those two races. They'll say that flatly that, that the Democrats just didn't have a very good candidate down there in Virginia. And up in uh, New Jersey, they'll say uh, Governor Corzine was one of the most unpopular politicians in America. And uh, you had a lot of high property taxes there. So they don't see national uh, lessons out of those races. Well, if they don't, they're whistling past a graveyard. Uh, in Virginia, Cree Dees, who the, is the Democrat candidate that they now talk so terribly about, four years ago, he and Bob McDonald, the same two people who ran this year, ran four years ago, and the difference in the election is 323 votes out of 2.1 million. Uh, they didn't think he was such a terrible candidate at that time. Uh, and it is true that, you know, races against incumbent governors our referenda on their records, and Governor Corzine's record wasn't good. Very high unemployment and extremely high taxes. But I, I'm going to tell you one thing that uh, is being missed by some people is that Bob McDonald, the Republican in Virginia, and Chris Christie, the Republican in New Jersey, were talking about the issues that are on people's minds, primarily jobs. Jobs and economic growth, all this spending that's going on in Washington, the enormous debt being run up. And what was Washington talking about? Well, for six months, they're fixated on health care reform, a bill that's unpopular, going to drive up the cost of health insurance, cut Medicaid spending a half a trillion dollars, raise taxes. And yet people back at home were saying, why aren't they focused on jobs? We need to be focused on jobs. A lot of Democrats after the elections back a couple of weeks ago said, this is a wake up call. The American people want us focused on jobs, not on health care reform, not on energy policy. Uh, let me uh, ask you about some uh, current events going on right now. Uh, President Obama has been in Asia for the past eight days. He's in South Korea today. He was in China yesterday. and. Uh, if you look at the reports coming out of there, he had a, took kind of a very different stance, it seems, to some people uh, with the Chinese than, uh, say, Bill Clinton did or certainly George Bush did on their, their visits to China. What's your assessment of how he's doing on this uh, Asian trip? Well, you know, presidents have to travel overseas, and that's part of it. We understand it, and these, these are huge trading partners for us. But I think more Americans want to see the president and the Congress particularly focused on our own economy, focused on job creation. Uh, that's, you know, when you get 10.2% unemployment and no end in sight to the loss of jobs, that's what Americans want people, fo want, want the president focused on. And, you know, I'm not criticizing him for going on a foreign trip because presidents have to do that. But let's face it, people here at home are focused on jobs and the economy, and they're very concerned about all this spending and debt that's being run up. Well, I mean, you know, but Bob, people know you, that you can't spend yourself rich, and they know the country can't do it either. But when you're a trillion dollars in debt to one country, as we are to China, uh, that's bound to have some impact on jobs. Uh, do you think uh, what he did and the positions he took there are going to help uh, create more jobs? I mean, that's that's, uh, we owe those folks a lot of money. Well, we do, and when we're devaluing the dollar like it's, the, the value of the dollar is going down so fast, it is because of all this spending and all this debt and the fact that the public and the world sees no end in sight. 
trillion dollars here, trillion dollars there. Now we're talking about a trillion dollar health care bill. They're talking about an energy bill. Lord knows what all the costs that are going to be involved there, but we do know this. They're going to cost jobs and they're going to drive up the cost of energy or drive up the cost of health care, depending on which one you're talking about. That's really not what the American people are looking for. Let's talk a little bit about uh, somebody in your party, uh, Sarah Palin. She had the uh, book tour of all book tours, it seems. They're calling it a Palin Palooza that's kicked off. She's uh, every time you turn on television, there she is. Do you think uh, that she is trying to position herself to run for something, Governor Barber, or is she just trying to sell books? Uh, what do you think this is all about? I, Bob, I don't know. I, I, I suspect she's going to sell a lot of books because uh, she's very popular, she's got a following, and I think it's going to be a very successful book. Uh, but whether she intends to run for something else or where she's headed, I'm not privy to that. I served as governor with her for several years. My wife and I like her. She's a heck of a lot smarter than she gets credit for. Uh, and I hope she sells a bunch of books. Uh, well, do you think... Uh just in a practical sense, she can be a viable candidate because, after all, here's somebody who was governor who resigned the office. And, and it seems to me it would be very difficult for her uh, to get into a primary. The fact that she left an office she'd been uh, elected to, do, do you think she could be a viable candidate for president or some other office? Well, I, I certainly wouldn't rule her out. As I say, she's got a following. I think you're going to see that from this book tour. Um, I, I'll tell you this, though, in a, in a bigger sense than Sarah Palin or Haley Barber, Republicans need to be focused on the elections in 2010. Those are the elections that really, really matter for us. We got 37 governor's races, I think 36 Senate races, the entire House of Representatives at the federal level, tons of legislative seats. And any Republican who's looking beyond 2010 just doesn't have his eye on the ball. So uh, that's where I'm trying to keep my attention, uh, and particularly as chairman of the Republican Governors Association, is to keep focused on 2010. That's the election that matters. So how do you see 2010 right now? I think the New Jersey and Virginia governor's races gave us a big, a lot of momentum, a real springboard. I remember, Bob, when I was chairman of the party back in 93, 94, the Virginia New Jersey governor's races that year, which we won both of, and the election of Rudy Giuliani, mayor of New York, on uh, that same day really propelled our candidate recruiting. You remember, we elected 71 freshman House Republicans in the 1994 election. More than half of them made the decision to run for Congress after the November 93 elections. And I think you'll see a lot of that this year. A lot of people who've been thinking about running will say, will say to themselves, well, if I'm ever going to do it, now's the time. The winds at our back, our volunteers are excited, our leadership's motivated, our donors are seeing hope, and so they're uh, getting out their checkbooks. Uh, I really think we are set up for 2010 to be a very good year right now. Now look, I've been around a long time, and a month is a light year in politics, so nobody can predict a day and say 2010 is definitely going to be this way. But we have a lot of momentum going into 2010. There's no doubt about that. Uh, one uh, quick question on a totally unrelated subject. Uh, what is your take on uh, the administration's decision uh, to try the mastermind behind the 9-11 uh, catastrophe uh, in New York? Well, it gives me pause, Bob. Here's, here's the thing that, that concerns me about it. It, it, it sounds like the administration is taking the position that this is a criminal justice issue. And the war on terror is not a criminal justice issue. It is a gigantic military issue. Last week with three other governors, I visited Mississippi's troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. I got 4,000 Mississippi National Guard in Iraq and Afghanistan today. And it is not a criminal justice issue. And, and I hope this is not a signal that the administration is going to treat it that way. And I'm not being accusatory or saying that's what it is. It concerns me that that may, that may be what this signals. All right. Governor Haley Barber talking about a variety of issues this morning with us. Thank you so much, Governor. Hey, Bob. Thank you, sir.
And joining us now here in the studio, the executive director of the Democratic Governors Association, Nathan Daschle. Mr. Daschle, my guess is you have a slightly different take on some of the things that Governor Barber was talking about. Indeed. Let's talk about these governor's races in New Jersey and, and in Virginia. He says that you're whistling in the dark if you think that those don't have uh, uh, implications for Democrats in 2010. Well, <clears throat> nobody knows how to turn a phrase like Governor Barber, that's for sure, but uh, I, do, I do disagree with him on the import of these elections. Virginia and New Jersey were about two things, Virginia and New Jersey. These states have gone against the White House for decades. There's truly nothing out of the ordinary that happened in 2009. So uh, we walked into this election year knowing that these would be very difficult races to win. Uh, we were, of course, disappointed that we lost, but certainly not surprised. This was a trend that we had seen, uh, as I mentioned, for decades. But we're not focused on 2009 anymore. We're focused on 2010, because that's what this is about. This is about what parties can be best able to lead the country forward in 2010. And as Governor Barber mentioned, we have 37 races next year at the state level. 21 of those are open seats. So there will be a real battle for uh, philosophies and a battle for um, over which party has the best ideas to lead this country forward. And on that score, I'm confident that the Democrats will prevail. One thing uh, Governor Barber talked about, and he clearly what he wanted to talk about, uh, was jobs and putting the <clears throat> emphasis on jobs. And the fact is, in both the Virginia and New Jersey races, that's what the winners talked about. They talked that's about right. the economy. You didn't see them getting into some of these social issues that some Republicans have talked about um, in in the past, do you? Why didn't Governor Barber? I tried to get him to talk a little bit about President Obama, you know, and what's going on in in Asia. And again, he turned it back to. He said, "No, it's nice. Presidents have to go overseas," right, right. which was kind of an interesting comment. But he said, "What Americans want to know about is is jobs. That is well, going to be the <clears throat> issue, is it not?" I, I don't disagree with that. You know, Governor Barber has not uh, gotten where he is uh, without being a smart uh, smart uh, politician. And he's absolutely right that this is about jobs and the economy. But let's break this down. Uh, what the Republicans are offering, I don't think Americans are looking for. I mean, they, they are thumping their chests about a GOP comeback. This is a Republican resurgence. The GOP comeback is literally a coming back of the same ideas that got us into this, the worst economic crisis since the Great, since the Great Depression. And on top of that, it's actually literally the same leaders. It's John Kasich, it's Sam Brownback, it's Bill McCollum, it's Rick Lazio. I mean, these are the same people, the same ideas that voters rejected clearly in 2008. You know, progress takes a little bit of time. Governor Obama, or President Obama has been in office for less than a year. Our governors are working with him every day to make this country better. And, you know, I, I think you see it on the state level, too. There's a real difference in leadership. You know, right, Governing Magazine just named the best governor in the country. You know who it was? It was a Democrat, Martin O'Malley from Maryland. Of the seven states with AAA bond ratings, five of those have Democratic governors. So there really are differences at the state level. And I don't think the, the comeback of the Republican philosophy is going to be what Americans are looking for next year. I guess I have to ask you the obligatory Sarah Palin question. It's not really a question. I'll just say Sarah Palin. <laughs> you know, she's <laughs> no question she's a cultural phenomenon. And I would never have predicted that we'd still be talking about her today uh, to the degree that we are. But I don't think um, I have a hard time taking her seriously as a political leader. Um, I do think that she is uh, emblematic of the struggle in the Republican Party for the heart and soul of the party. I mean, this Republican Party is as divided as I think it has ever been. There is a real war. We saw it in New York 23. We even saw it in Virginia and New Jersey. In Virginia, Bob McDonnell still has not come out to Virginia voters as a conservative. Once he does, they're going to be in for quite a shock. Chris Christie could not have put out uh, less of a clear plan or idea of how he wanted to lead the state forward. So. In neither case was there some affirmation for their ideology. But I do think you see a real struggle for who's in charge of this party, who are its leaders. You've got Michael Steele, you have Governor Barber, Rush Limbaugh, Glenn Beck, Sarah Palin. You have a lot of people trying to be the leader of this party. Final question, because I know a lot of our viewers are probably asking themselves, Dashiell, are you any kin to Tom Dashiell, they're asking. That's my father. Yes, well, I, <laughs> I knew that, of course. but. <laughs> I must say, listening to you, uh, I almost could hear your oh, dad. I take that as your, a compliment. Thank you. some of your answers. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks for letting me be here today. Us. Okay. Thank you for watching Washington Unplugged. Uh, we want your input. Do you think the New Jersey and Virginia governor races uh, signal Republican gains in 2010? Leave your comments below this video. I'm Bob Schieffer. Have a great day.